We are doing a powerful and amazing teaching on here. Let's go to Matthew chapter uh, or Mark chapter 12. Let's look at this here. Rock of ages. Glad for me. Let me hide. Let me hide myself in the rock of ages. Let's go here. We are Mark chapter. Mark chapter 12. In Mark chapter 12, verse 41, it says, And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. Jesus beheld how people cast money into the treasury. Jesus is watching money. The creator of the universe is watching money. So obviously if he's watching it and it's, it is a concern to him, it's a care for him, he's fascinated by it. This money is tied into how people are dealing with his presence. He's using this money observation to watch who are his worshipers and who are not. Let's go here. Verse 41 saying, Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld. Watch this here. He went go take a position right where the treasury was, where money is. It's, it didn't say that he stood. It says that he sat over. That means that he wanted to magnify all activities going on at this treasury. That's all he wanted to study. He wanted to see where the money was moving. And who were the individuals that were moving this money, sowing this money? It says that Gia sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and beheld how people cast money into the treasury. So he had one study. He was studying who was sowing. Now Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means that he's the depiction that he shows. It's a solidified part of his personality that is not going up and down, back and forth. This is him. Now, look at what the text is saying, saints. It says that Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how people cast money into the treasury. So he was zoomed in on sowing accounts. Now, watch this here. I want you to catch this. Everybody that was in this meeting was not, a, most people wasn't aware that they had an invisible sowing account that Jesus was watching. There were people that was casting money into the treasury that had no idea that Jesus had an account of every seed they were sowing. You say, well, why, why, why would Jesus do that? Because he's a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. These people w were ignorant that this sowing that they was doing was at the top of Jesus' observation. Not who could dance well, 
not who could pray well, and not who could dress well. While he inside this meeting, he looking at who is sowing. Now, saints, it's amazing that this is in the word of God. That said, Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld. Now, saints, do you know why this is amazing? Because when we look at this text, you get to recognize something about the Lord that is not um, often uh, meditated on. Like oftentimes you can take your mind and think about all type of things and not even think about this. Why is Jesus positioning himself in the money realm? Now, what do Jesus know that these people don't know? Jesus knows that he wants to partner with someone in the money realm. He wants to partner with somebody in the money realm. That's why he positioned himself in the money realm. Because he want to partner with somebody in this money realm. Number two. He's there to give somebody abundant life power. He's there to... Somebody is going to receive his abundant life power. And he's watching to look. Who, who, who is it? Who? Who? This not up to me. This is up to the sower. Who going to choose to sow? Who going to choose to honor me? Who going to choose to build the altar and worship me? It's not up to me. See, Jesus not deciding who become rich and who become wealthy. He not deciding that. He not deciding who will live in abundance. He not deciding that. The seed that's being sown is what he multiplies. So if the seed not sown, no multiplication from God. He looking to see who he can give abundant life power to. The glory of abundant life to. Number three. He looking to see who have operated in the blessing mantle of the mind. Whose mind is blessed? Saints, fear is a curse. Remember, I taught you that fear is satanic activity going on in someone's brain. Fear is a curse because it deactivates your ability to make decisions that God wants you to make in finances. It deactivates. You can't make those decisions. Fear is a curse and it's also it is a hindrance to the wealth power of the Holy Ghost. Because how the wealth power was flowing towards the woman at Zarephath was not for her to give her final meal to herself and her son. But for her to pit Elijah first and give him the first tabs of the meal and then trust that the power of God was going to sustain her and her son. So... The blessed mindset required her to pick her and who she cared about last and pick the prophet of God, number one. Jesus is at this treasury looking at who has neglected themselves and who they care about to care about him. Because he the one that's going to make rich. He the one that come to give life and life more abundantly. So he looking to see who have come in here to make my life more abundant. Who've come to honor my presence. They are the ones that I want to minister to, minister these angels to, minister this power to, minister this glory to, and multiply them. That's who I'm looking at. 
You'll notice Jesus is now over where the intercessors are. And me, you both know that the synagogue was full of intercessors. It was full of people praying. But Jesus didn't position himself over where the prayer warriors was. Nor did he position himself where the people were singing in the choir. Nor did he position himself to where the word was being preached. He positioned himself where money was being sown. This Jesus here. They told us that money was evil. And here, the one that's only could present what goodness looked like is standing watching who's sowing money into him. And this, now watch this here. Jesus is also watching everybody that is hindered by seed blocking demons. He knows who they are. They can't sow because their master won't permit them to sow. So he knows everybody that's underneath the principality of not sowing, not honoring God's presence. He knows all of them too. Saints, what this text is revealing is that Jesus has an interest in sowers. Jesus has an interest in those that will release their trust and not be scaredy cats, but will operate in the kingdom system with power and might. See, many people, and, and, and you'll have them in your natural bloodline, even if they was religious, they wasn't rich. God didn't trust them with their money. They'll play like they're so sanctified and holy and righteous, but God didn't even consider them righteous enough to hold his money. Son ain't right. You know what's not right? They didn't honor God. One time I was talking to someone and I was asking them, do they know any sowers? Matter of fact, I was talking to three different people at different three different times. And I remember one of the persons was telling me, you know, uh, somebody used to sow in my family. I said, but they poor, right? They're they not rich, right? I said, no, 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 no. They, that's not a sower. The seed multiplies. You see what I'm saying? Huh? The seed multiplies. So what you want to catch is if you see anybody's life that tell you that they've been sowing all their life and, and they, 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 they end up poor, they're lying to you. A sower will have in 10 years what somebody been praying for in 70 years. A sower will have in three years what somebody been praying for in 15, for 15 years. It don't take God long to multiply you. My God. You, you trying to mistake God for a toad or a turtle. God is not no turtle. My God. I said God ain't no turtle. <laughs> God is not no turtle. No, no sloth. See, you got to renew your mind that God is not a turtle. He not a toad. He's not a sloth. Look at, let's look at second Peter chapter three, verse nine. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. 
The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. So I, I want you to hear this. In second Peter chapter three, verse nine. We are seeing that God does not operate in giving you harvests slow. What he promised he was going to do don't take no time, no long time rather. What he promised that he was going to do on his side of his job, you do your job. He said, I I'm not slack. You know what slack means? Saints, um, I, I have a pet peeve. I don't like when people walk slow. Cause law, walking slow to somebody that's, that, that has accomplished a lot, it, it, it communicates to them that you ain't about business. So they, they don't like that. So, so let me just give you some wisdom. If me and you ever walking together, walk. You see what I'm saying? Don't walk slow. I want you to have energy in your state. Don't, don't act like, say it's the same way. How many of y'all ever see them people driving 20 miles per hour? They driving below the speed limit. Don't drive below. You can drive the speed limit, but don't be 20 miles below the speed limit. You driving 30 and a 50. At least drive 45 or 43 or 41. You ain't got to break the speed limit. But don't be below the speed limit. When I say below, I mean don't be 30 miles per hour below the speed limit. It's 80 and you going 50. What? So the word slack means that you take your time. The word slack means that there is no... Um, there is no um, excitement, enthusiasm, and charge to get something done immediately. So when the word of God said that he not slack concerning his promise, it means that he is not saying, uh, I could bless her two years from now. That'll be all right. The Lord like, no, 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 girl, I've been trying to bless you for the longest. Let's get it done. Man, you've been my son for the longest. Let me fix the problems that's troubling you. Let me fix your debts. Let me fix the stuff that you went wrong in your finances. Let me fix the problem you got with the government. Let me fix it. I want to work with you. Let's make some decisions together. Let's be co-workers. Hallelujah. Saints, this, this scripture is a life changer. This scripture is a life changer. Because when you look at this text saying that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, his promise is what he's pro he, he, he gave you an oath that he going to minister these things to you if you would keep his word. He going to make your life look so grand, luxurious and heavenly. If you will keep his word. He going to impress you and cause you to impress others by how the condition of your life appears. These are all things he promised. He promised to heal your body. These are all things he promised. He promised that he was going to give you peace that surpasses all understanding to guard your heart and mind in Christ, through Christ Jesus. These are all things he promised. He promised that he went go prepare a place for you. That where he is, you'll be also. That in his father's house are many mansions. Oh my God. What? He said in his father's house are many mansions. These are all promises. These are all promises. 
The Bible said that he's not slack concerning his promises. So God is not in the mindset of taking his time to give you a harvest. He's in urgent mode. So saints, I, I, now you understand why it's so disrespectful when you go to God in prayer in a certain manner. Lord, why, 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 when, when this going? Lord, I, I'm, I'm not the one you're supposed to be asking that. Why are you not asking yourself that? Why haven't you got in the revelation of my heart? So you sowing into me and you don't know me? You saying that you honor me and you don't even know what you honoring? Oh my God. See, that's, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so you still a religious sower. Because if you in the righteousness of God, you'll understand that his righteousness is to not be slack concerning his promise. That means that he's not trying to take his time with money coming. He not trying to take his time with bringing you out of your debts. He not trying to take his time with bringing you into abundance. He talking about now faith, now faith, now pyre. God, God, nagos. Now faith. <laughs> Glock. Money cometh to me now. Now, faith, if you understood that God not trying to heal your body next year, that he trying to heal your body right now, you will stop praying about your healing and start praising for your healing. You'll start rejoicing over the healing. You'll start telling the Lord every day, you're my healer. You're my healer. I got it. Thank you. Since when I had chronic asthma, there were several aspects you could take. You could feel bad for yourself, pity yourself, say, why am I preaching? I'm seeing people get healed. Why I don't got it? Which is a dumb behind question. Stupid. When you're in the flesh, you're at your dumbest realm, boy. When you in the flesh, you're in the basement. Remember, the basement is always under the house. The house is always over. The, the basement is under the house. So think about it. You living under God's house when you're in the basement. You're not receiving from what's in his house. Healing is in the house. It's not under the house. My God. Wealth and riches shall be where? In my house. Not under the house. So everything you are void of those things when you're under the house you're living from the basement because those things are in the house he's not slack concerning his promise so you're not you're not the one trying to speed god up you're not the one trying to pitch some pep in his step. Lord, I need you to hurry up and fix these things. No, no, no. You, 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 you looking at the wrong person, man. Wow, this eye opening, saints. Are you catching this? Um, saints, what, what are some of you all catching on this as I'm talking here? What are some of you all catching on here? Saints, oh, as a matter of fact, what some of y'all have been catching on these teachings? Is there anything sticking in your soul? What's sticking in your soul right now? Is there anything sticking in your soul from these teachings? Saints, we've been doing a lot of teachings uh, this week. How much teachings we did this week? It's still Saturday, right? How much teachings we did this week? God is able to do just what he said he will do. He's going to fulfill 
every promise, every promise to you. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. Says, look at this phone I got. This phone, this phone that went through the fire and through the mud. God is able to do just what he said he will do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. What are some of the things that you've been catching from these teachings? If you're not in prayer or obedience, satanic altars will access you. I see you, my key. I see you. God is able to do just what he said he will do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. Say, how many, uh, what you catching out of this teaching so far? What are you catching out of this teaching so far? I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, I sing praises to your name. People don't make God. Let me see here. My kid look like you're the only fast one on this line right here. <laughs> People don't hear God because they have a lot of information flowing in them. Okay, that's a good one too. We, and that was in the Word of Knowledge broadcast. Look at Zipporah here. A stronghold is strength. That comes from the empowerment of devils. Think about that there. Isn't that some powerful stuff there? A stronghold. Think about that. It's strength that comes from the empowerment of devils. So a stronghold. It makes you have a weakness. But it is the power of darkness at work. So, so everybody's weakness is the power of devils. And the power of God is the weakness of devils. That's a wisdom, though. I just gave you something fresh there. Look at that. China said, I counted 32 broadcasts in one week. So we did 32 broadcasts in, in six days. Sharika said, there is a grace that comes along with the word of knowledge. It's an ability that God gives to tune your ear into him. That's some good stuff there. Hainsley said, forgiveness protects your heart from bitterness so your love won't be interrupted. Isn't that good stuff there? That broadcast I did on forgiveness yesterday was deep too. I, I hope y'all caught that message. And then we dealt with the anatomy. Okay, when you rehearse the word of God, your performance becomes flawless. Jesus studies the money sown. So saints, we did 31 teaching. Keisha Holmes said we did 31 teachings. My. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, my pastor would never. God is able to... 
say, touch your neighbor. Say, my pastor would never. Yes, we bow down and worship Yahweh. Yes, we bow down ooh, and worship Yahweh. 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 Yahweh, yes, we bow down, ooh, don't slow down God because he's not, don't slow God down because he's not slack, catch up, Janet Jackson, that's some good stuff there, let me see, let me see here. Ashley said, we have done 65 videos in 20 days. Serious. Cindy said, only listen to your prophet. And Cindy, that kills the flesh so powerfully so that you can live in progress and advancement without no hindrance. Cindy, sometimes God can't bless a lot of people because they're, they're, they haven't proven to God that they can stick to the straight and narrow path. And that, that's the straight and narrow, it, it wins credibility with God that if I do bless you, I could trust you to stick to the single instruction I give you because you already developed a single eye already. I can already see you operating in singleness of eye. And remember what Jesus said. He said, if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. That's Matthew chapter six. So if your eye be single. And so a lot of times people eyes are dating or it's married and God wants your eye to remain single. So that you could be full of light, meaning you full of revelation. Your eyes are open to what God wants from you because you're in that single eye. You're in the single place. You're in that single dimension. So it's easier for you to tap into things. Keisha Holmes said, when you're sowing, the Lord takes you. The Lord takes you into. The heavenly realm at the appointed time. Hainsey said the occupying of Joshua's position was purity. The occupying of Joshua's position uh, uh, was purity. Keisha Holmes said drama takes the soul out of its prosperity. I receive grace to sing. <laughs> my soul, my soul, my soul doth magnify the Lord. I, I, I learned also. Somebody wrote on here, my mama, my mama, my mama say, my mama say. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Somebody wrote here, my mama, my mama. My mama, my mama, mom. my mama, my mama, my mama say. That's a joke. The milk mantle. For the growth of your provision and money. Think about that. We ever heard of milk mantle? But see, Peter talked about that. He said that you may grow by the milk of the word. So that's a milk mantle. 
Ashley said we did 65 teachings in 20 days. We did 65 teachings in 20 days. 65 different teachings in 20 days. All right. Makia said, if somebody is not a seed sower, they have rejected the word of God. If someone is not a seed sower, they have rejected the word of God. Because he's sowing, then it come from flesh, blood. It came from the word of God. It was God's word that invented sowing. So you got to reject the word of God to reject the seed, the seed from being sown out of you. See, that's something else. Zipporah said the only way to stay close to God is through instructions. Anybody else got anything they want to say? Am I missing some of you all statements? Sharika said, Paul and Silas operate in the spirit realm to bring judgment on every spirit that was stopping their progress. It said, Paul, Paul and Silas operated in the spirit realm to bring judgment on every spirit that was stopping their progress. That's so major, Sharika. Alexis said the angel of the word of knowledge can give you knowledge about yourself before giving knowledge about others. And that's another revelation. And we, that's something rare to catch that side of the angel of the word of knowledge because you, you'll think about the word of knowledge coming to you about people, but the word of knowledge will come to you also about yourself so that you can identify what could taint your perception about another person what could taint how you view a situation because it's you're really your heart your heart no matter what the truth is is still going to stick to what its perception is so you can think that somebody bad and if you want to think that they bad even though god tell you that they're not you'll stick to what you felt because like i get irritated you know what well, let me tell you my pet peeve what, what irritate me? I ir I get irritated if God says go to the Brook Cherif and you with somebody and they talking about, man, there's too much mosquitoes at this Brook Cherif. Why would you Look for faults where God picked you. It's a realm of stupid. Only dumb people will find something wrong with where God picked you. That show how stupid you is. If you really believe that God was smart, you would know that if he picked you somewhere, it's the best place you could be. I told you a story where people told me, you know, Prophet, you should live in Hawaii. You know, you should live places. I said, I ain't living nowhere where my where my portal ain't open. I don't want to be nowhere. I don't want to be somewhere just because it look nice. I don't want to be somewhere just because you think that is a nice place to live. You know how many people go live somewhere talking about it's a nice place to live and then a tsunami come and they get they get swallowed up in that tsunami. You know how many people that happen to? Do you know how many times people went overseas on a vacation and while they overseas on a vacation, there is a major disaster that happened and they die and never return home because they went to what seemed good, what looketh good, what appeared to be good instead of leaning on the smart God. If God sent you to a restaurant, eat nigga, eat nigga, eat nigga, eat. Don't be up there looking in the restaurant, looking to see a cockroach, looking to see if there's ants, looking to see if there's... Nigga, eat, eat. You go look for roaches and cockroaches. You telling God I'm smarter than you. I know how to protect myself. Nigga, you don't know how to protect yourself. 
all this pride that you carry, how God going to get you into the hundredfold? And you got all these intellects about yourself where you think that you're smarter than him. Sit your broke self down and learn. If you could protect yourself better than God, you would have been done, did it long daggone time ago. Don't be operating as a fool all throughout your life that when you come into God's kingdom, you think that you could tell him what's best for you. Oh, Lord, I can't go there because they got COVID. The Lord sent you right there. Go. Now you see why God almost killed Jonah. He, th he, he, he had them throw him over the boat and then he had mercy on him. Let the whale get him. Let the big fish get him. But God really was going to kill his dumb behind. Jonah was the definition of a stupid prophet. Stupid. God tell him to go to Nineveh. He think he's smarter than God. No, I ain't supposed to go to Nineveh. I know what's best for me. They in violence. I know what's best for me. And God had them throw his dumb behind over the boat. Okay, stupid. He don't think that God know how to make decisions for his life. And since this is another realm why people stay in fear, because you think that you're smarter than God. Everything that he tell you to do, you want to analyze it and figure out how is it my safety. If you were so smart, you would have arrived at your destiny a long time ago. So if you ain't arrived at your destiny, shut up. Shut up and get to moving, Sally. When you're in pride, you'll think that you know better than God. And what you knew haven't unlocked nothing for you. I'm just giving you some secrets. So if I ever have dinner with you, remember you have a future with your man of God. If I ever call you on a date, if me and you go on a date, if we eat in together, I don't want to see no stupid behavior. I'm just, I'm just giving you the heads up. I don't want to see no stupid behavior. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just giving some of you all a, 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 a cheat sheet. One of my pet peeves is when people think that they're smarter than God. God say, okay, I want you to go to the Sahara Desert. You get to the Sahara Desert. It's too hot out here for me. It's too hot out here for you. Hell is too hot for you. You you want hell or this? Sorry, desert or, or, or hell? And, and you 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 wait, people. Out. You talk about the Sahara Desert, 120, 150. Well, hell ain't 150 or 250 or 350 or 650. Hell is boiling. It's hotter than you would ever imagine. See, I gave some of y'all a cheat sheet. So don't act stupid. Don't act stupid. One of my pet peeves, what I hate, this is what I hate. I hate when God say to do something and somebody could still find a way to criticize what God said to do. God said, take your shoes off. This holy ground. Uh, you know, I ain't get my nails done yet, you know, so... Uh, I'll just sit this one out. I ain't going to take my shoes up. You better take them crocodile looking toes out right now in Jesus name. Take them crocodile looking feet. Take them big Shirley feet out right now in Jesus name. Take them big Shirley feet out. right. <laughs> take them big, take, take them big old whippersnappers out right now in Jesus name. Take them out right now in Jesus' name. Take them squirrel looking feet out in the name of Jesus. We beseech you right now. Take them big old frog leg looking feet out right now. Never find no excuse because you, you, you pick yourself above God and make it look like God is lower than you. He don't know what he doing. And saints, I'm going to tell you like, I'm going to tell you like this. When you have that type of mindset, you'll find yourself leaving the will of God every time. You'll find yourself operating in a spirit of witchcraft, rebellion, disobedience. You know why that happens? Because you think you're smarter than God. So saints, I'm, I'm telling you right now, you got to get this thing fixed before you enter into your promised land. Don't be up there checking God when he check you and tell you what he wants. 
Don't do that. Because when you do that, you're telling the Lord that you're smarter than him. He don't want pit no wealth in nobody's hand that think that they done arrived and now they higher than God in their mindset. You better acknowledge him and let him tell you what to do. If he tell you to sit your behind at home, don't say, no, I won't go to the carnival today. Don't do that. Because when you go to the carnival, pop, 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 pop. And then everybody want to talk about how could she die? She was such a good community citizen. She was such a good person. She gave to everybody. Yeah, but she didn't want to humble herself and listen to the voice of God tell her to stay home. So you, you mad that she gets shot? She got shot. She wasn't listening. So all them good works that you talked about didn't produce a spirit of listening to God's simple instruction. Don't exalt yourself uh, against the knowledge of God, but exalt the knowledge of God against yourself. If you're taking notes, write it down. I just heard that in the spirit. Don't exalt yourself against the knowledge of God. This is what the Holy Ghost is saying to you. Don't exalt yourself against the knowledge of God. Exalt the knowledge of God against yourself. Don't exalt yourself against the knowledge of God. Exalt the knowledge of God against yourself. You lift it up and you say, this is what I will praise. I want to show you something before I uh, finish this broadcast. I want to show you what David started saying. And he really renewed his mind when he started talking like this in Psalms. I'm going to show you this. And this is Psalm uh, 156. Uh, no, Psalm 56, verse 10. It says, in God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. I'm going to say this one more time. Psalm 56, verse 10. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. We got a lot of people on here. Thank you for being on this broadcast tonight. Thank you. Psalm, Psalm 56, verse 10, it says, in God, will I praise his word? In the Lord, will I praise his word? Uh, let's say this one more time. Psalm 56, verse 10, in God, will I praise his word? In the Lord, will I praise his word? You know what David did? He renewed his mind. He said, everything that God speaks is correct. So I'm going to celebrate it. I'm not going to find a way to contradict it. I'm not going to find another opinion. I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. I'm going to celebrate it. When you have evil spirits, you will think that you're smarter than God. God send you to, to sketch, buy some sketches. You tell us, nah, I... I think these sketches gonna hurt my feet. Look at the spirit of Miss Piggly Wiggly. Miss Piggly Wiggly, here she go again. Miss Piggly Wiggly, Mr. Billingsley, here go Mr. Billingsley again. Can't shut up. Get, get get them knees up, get, pit them knees up and pit, 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 pit them ankles up and pit them, pit them, pit them hoofs. <laughs> pit them hoofs in them sketches. Pit them, pit them goddamn hoofs in them sketches. Pit them hoofs in them sketches. Pit them horseshoes. <laughs> pit them horse, horseshoes that you got. Pit them in them sketches. Talking about. Oh, I, I don't, them sketches, I don't know, they don't do good. Pit them horseshoes in them sketches right now. Pit them horseshoes in them sketches. When you got evil spirits, they'll have you contradicting God like God is dumb and you wise. You know how to keep yourself. You know how to protect yourself. Oh, I don't want to go there. I don't want nothing to happen to you, to me. But God told you to go there. 
You you think that you you actually more in danger staying where you at because there's no protection where you at if God tell you to go somewhere. No, I don't want to go to Chicago. I don't want nobody to shoot me. If God sent me to if God sent me to Chicago right now, I'm I'm right there. I'm right there. As a matter of fact, next time, welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference, Chicago. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see who got the Holy Ghost today. Next welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference, Chicago. Matter, matter of fact, we 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 right off of O Block. <laughs> there are two of y'all done peed on your Two of y'all don't pee. We're going to see who got the Holy Ghost. We're going to see who walking in power in here. Holy Spirit, Chicago. We're going to O Block. <laughs> we, we're going to be right off of O Block. Flip, flip flopping, flip flopping everything in the neighborhood. We, <laughs> We gonna be right O Block, flip flopping every game and flip flopping everything in O Block. Work on Holy Spirit, copy. We gonna see we got the Holy Ghost in here. We gonna see. We gonna see. We going to Chicago. We going to the, the right in the thick of it. We need to go there. Number one, find out where we hit the shots fired. Find out where we hit the shots being fired. That's exactly we gonna go miles away. That's where we going to go. Some of y'all out here, some of y'all out here tell some. Yes, prophet, that's right. You scared in the back of your bones. <laughs> I go with you, prophet. You done turn into Parkinson's disease. I go with you, prophet. I go with you. I go with you, prophet. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay you, yet will you trust him. Get the, get the, get them horseshoes, buckaroo up. We going to Chicago. Buckaroo them the horseshoes up to Chicago. <laughs> we enter into the Chicago. Man, we like, where are the people at? Um, prophet, I couldn't come. I got sick with COVID before I can't got on the flight. They wouldn't let me on the flight. They tested me, say I couldn't get on. My, my, my temperature was high. You know, I was teaching my daughter that Zendaya Glory Holmes. I said, God has not given you the spirit of fear. And I was teaching her. I was teaching her whenever you experience fear, it's something that Satan will give you the interpretation of a thing. So you'll be watching something and it will make you feel intimidated, like you're inferior, like you can't overcome it, like it's greater than you, like it's going to harm you. Like it's going to take you out. I was teaching my daughter that, that fear is a fallen angel. That it shows you things from a negative angle. Parego telegasa rovanesia. 